Welcome to the weekly recap. Today is Friday, December 2nd. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Put on a lot of trades this week, took off some, did some adjusting trades. A couple of housekeeping notes I just wanted to mention. At the request of some of the subscribers, we've decided to, we're gonna put a little bit more commentary related to each trade. So when you get a text message, it's still gonna go out as just the trade alert, but when you log into the site, uh, under the post that we go over here, you're going to see a little bit more commentary on each trade going forward. So let's jump into the trades, starting with the trades on Monday and go in order that we made them. So the first one we made was in XLF where we sold a straddle. So if we took a look at XLF where we're at, we're, we're still well within our range. Uh, implied volatility has, has spiked up a little bit since then, so our profit line is down a little bit, but nothing to do here except for weight. Uh, if we go to the next trade, which was a closing trade in EWW. So this is a trade that we put on back on uh, 1121, so last week, and we took it off seven days later for a nice profit, uh, almost 40% of max profit uh, for, for about $105 profit total. We did an opening trade in forward slash ZS, which is an iron condor in the soybean futures. So if we took a look, take a look at ZS, as you can see, we're up a little bit of profit in that trade, still well within our range. Hopefully we can get a little bit of a move up in soybeans next week, take that off for a nice profit. Next trade we did was, oh, I, I sent out an alert. Uh, earlier in the week, there was some issues with the, some coding coming through on the text messages. We've got that issue fixed, working with the developer, so that should be all set and good to go we move on to the next trade here uh, on the 29th so on Tuesday we sold a strangle in forward slash ZB which is the bond future so if we take a look at the bond trade uh, as you can see we're pretty well centered here still all within our range nothing to do here except for weight and we took then we then we after we took off our EWW trade we actually uh, a day later we ended up putting another one back on in the January cycle and so that one was just put on so there's not going to be much to do here we're up a little bit of money in that as you can see on the charts volatility has had a nice contraction I'm gonna go to EWW volatility's had a nice contraction uh, you know after the election we're starting to see some some fear ease in Mexico and, uh, and so we're, we're still well centered on our trade in EWW. So moving along, the next trade was an adjusting trade in CL, which is the, the oil future. This one, this one needs a little bit more explanation just to make sure that you're clear on what we did. So essentially what we did was we had a, we had a strangle on in, in the oil futures. Okay, and, and it looked like this. Now we, now price had a huge move to the upside uh, and it, it breached our short call. And so that's when we needed to adjust. And so we did so. And so essentially what you do when you adjust a strangle is we're rolling up the untested side, right? So we're rolling from the put from where it is up to the 30 delta. Now the, the thing you wanna remember is you want to make sure you know how many days are left until expiration. In this case, there was only at the time of doing this, there was 15 days to expiration. So we don't want to do it in that same January cycle. We want to roll it to the February. Okay. So what we did is we rolled that from what, what looked like this and we rolled that to the 48 and a half call and the 47 put. Okay. So now it looks like this. So now we've got a, a little bit more of a narrow range. We still have room for the for the for oil to pull back and give us a profit, uh, but by extending duration and rolling our puts, our untested side up closer to the money, we collect more credit, give ourselves more time to be right on the trade. Now, if oil keeps moving up, you know we may have to make another adjustment. But as of right now, we just sit and wait. If oil makes a, a decent move down, we get more of a contraction in volatility, we'll be able to take this, this trade off for profit. 
Now we also have another strangle on in oil. Oil is a great trading vehicle. As you can say, as you can see, we're in the profit here, uh, well within our range. Nothing to do except for wait on oil. So let's go back to the trade list. Move our move on up. So in GLD, we had an, an adjusting trade, and GLD has been really on a, uh, a pretty good sized move to the downside. Uh, you know, as you can see, it, it, gold has just been falling, and and but implied volatility has stayed high, which makes it a great trading vehicle. So if we look at gold, we've got this we've got this iron condor on here. So we we've we've got that. We collected more credit by putting that on. And then we've got the the two call, excuse me, the two put sides still there. So we've got this put side, which is which is down. If we get a move up in gold, we'll take that off and end up you know collecting more money on the trade. And then we've got this other put spread from a previous iron condor that that's that's well in the money, probably not gonna come all the way back, but you never know, and that's why you keep it on. And there's not much else we can do with this because it's 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 going to be a losing a losing portion, but that's why you continue to put on iron condors, and take off the the winning side. So we as gold moves down, we take off the call side, take in that profit, put on another iron condor. It kept moving down, we took off the call side, took off that profit, and put on another iron condor. And so sometimes you have to manage these trades for one, two, maybe even three months, but, but that's the value of this adjust, adjusting because we want to take advantage of that high implied volatility. We don't wanna, we don't wanna exit our, our losing trades because it, when, when gold's had a massive move like this, you know, there is a chance that it could come back up. And we wanna be there to take advantage of that. So this is the best way to manage your iron condor trades is continue to collect that credit, take off the, the winning, uh, size of your iron condor, put on additional iron condors, and continue to massage and manage that trade uh, until, it, until it makes sense to take it off. And that's typically once implied volatility contracts. So keep, keep sticking with that, that process, and, and over time you're, you're going to have a very profitable uh, equity curve. Just sometimes it seems like it takes a while, but don't, don't get discouraged. Keep, keep doing the necessary adjustments and it'll work out in the end. Uh, let's see, so that was GLD, uh, I mentioned we added that iron condor and, and we moved that out to the January cycle because there is uh, less than 15 days left in December. Uh, in QQQ, had a nice profit there uh, back on 11-4, so November 4th, almost a month ago, we put that trade on and we sold that for an 86 cent credit. We bought it back here on December 1st. For, uh, for 31 cent debit, giving us a profit of $55 per contract. We had four contracts, so about a $220 winner on QQQ, so that was a nice trade. Uh, let's see, another adjusting trade in XBI. So let's take a look at XBI because this needs a little explanation. So what we had on was we had on this trade here where we had, we had rolled uh, one of the sides down, we rolled the calls down, and so we were just continuing to wait. Now we got down to the point where we only had 15 days to expiration, so that's our point when we want to start looking to either exit the trade or roll to the next, to the next expiration cycle. As you can see in XBI, uh, implied volatility still continues to be above that 50 range, so still a good position that we want to have on. So all we did was we simply rolled that from December to January. Now, the, the, the nuance here that, that I want to point out is in, in our December trade, we were at the 64 call and the 62 put. But when you go out to the January cycle, there, there's no 64 strike available. So what we did is we moved that to the 65. Okay, so you just go to one strike in either direction and, and, that's, and that's just fine. So we, we took off our December trade, we rolled that to January, and look what, look what happens when you do that. Look how much wider the break-evens are. So I'm gonna go back and click on that again. Look at where I've got the, the break-evens on our December trade marked with these hash marks, with these price slices. When we move it to January, look what happens. Not only does our break-evens 
widen extremely, but our profit potential goes up as well. And so now we're giving ourselves more duration, we're giving ourselves more time to be right, and, and we're, we're staying in the trade and trying to, to get a winner out of that trade. So we'll, we'll continue to monitor that and send out any alerts uh, that, that makes sense for XBI. Next trade is another adjusting trade in XLU. Kind of the same story. Uh, if you look at XLU, this is where we were uh, before we made the adjustment. Kind of a tight, narrow range. If you look at XLU, implied volatility is still great. You know, we're getting 90 on the IV percentile, so we want to have a position on an XLU. But we are down to that point where we're 15 days or less to expiration, so we wanted to roll out to the next expiration cycle. So we just simply used the same strikes because it was pretty well centered, and we moved out to January. So again, look at what happens to our break-evens when we roll. Our break-evens went from where these price slices are all the way out to these red hash marks right here to way out here. So it gives us a much wider range, gives us a higher profit potential. So now we sit and we wait for a contraction in volatility so we can take this off for a profit. Or if we need to make another adjustment, we will. And, that, and we just continue to play the game. Uh, let's see, next trade was in GDX. This was a trade that we made today on Friday and this was an adjusting trade. And same thing, we simply uh, Got a nice move up in GDX today. So we were able to go from this to, and we just simply, it, it, price was way down here. I thought we were gonna potentially need to make another adjustment, but we had a big move up in GDX today, up almost three and a half percent. So it was a great day to roll. So we rolled that up, widened out our break evens, gave ourselves more time to be right. And so now we continue to wait. And lastly, we put on a new opening trade in XLV. So let's take a look at XLV. Uh, we just put that on, so no profit, no loss. We're still right in the middle of our range. And so we'll see what happens in XLV next week. Uh, as you can see, we're, we're uh, when I put this on, IV percentile is at about 53. We've had a slight contraction down at 50. Uh, but nothing to do in XLV at this point. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to post those in our forum. We're really trying to get members to start posting questions instead of emailing us. Post them in the forum. That way we can answer more quickly and other subscribers, other members can also jump on there and, and help you answer any questions that you might have. There's no stupid questions. So anything that you need to have answered, feel free to post in the forum. We'll talk to you next week. Have a great weekend.